campus of North Idaho College and today's broadcast of the North Idaho College Public Forum. The crew is comprised of North Idaho College television students. Your moderator is North Idaho College political scientist, Tony Stewart. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to welcome to our program today Mr. Dwayne Hagedon, who is a businessman in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Mr. Hagedon is the chairman of the board and the owner of the Hagedon Corporation. That particular corporation has many ventures, including newspapers and a radio station, apartment complexes, a building construction company, and most recently, addition to the Corporation of Western Frontiers, which is a chain of hotels, motels, and restaurants. We've invited Mr. Hagedon to our program today to deal with a very special project that he has underway. Uh, it is a complex that will be constructed in the downtown area of Coeur d'Alene. This project has been advertised as a very significant addition and revision and modernization of the downtown area. Duane, as a person I have known a long time, it's a very special privilege for me to invite you to our program. I've been wanting to do one with you for some time, and this is a very special occasion for me, and happy to welcome you. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here, Tony. I would like to ask you a series of questions that will lead into uh, the project that we have before us, and we have a model that you've been kind enough to bring to uh, show us what we can look forward to in the future. Uh, I think it would be very appropriate to start the program by asking you, how did this dream come about? Uh, always such a project has a starting point in someone's uh, mind, and would you share that with us? Well, Tony, I uh, uh, was born and raised on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene, uh, my family uh, have had a home uh, in the uh, uh, West Lakeshore uh, Fort Grounds area, and I grew up on the beaches at the public beach. And uh, uh, as I uh, progressed through my business career, uh, I've always had a, a great appreciation for Lake Coeur d'Alene and all of Coeur d'Alene. And uh, uh, having a home across the lake, uh, which you can only commute by by uh, boat, uh, I had a slip uh, underneath the the uh, present Hagedon building, which was owned by the North Shore organization, and I believe there was a furniture store on top of it at that time, and uh, I always consider myself to be a dreamer and a goal setter, and uh, one of those uh, goals and dreams that I thought about uh, uh, for a number of summers as I rented a slip uh, uh, underneath the furniture store at how great it would be someday to have my office building there. and. Uh, as time went on, uh, originally uh, the North Shore was going to build uh, uh, their extension of the Templins Motel on the Hagedon newspaper uh, building site. Then the Milwaukee property where the present North Shore is located came up for sale and they acquired that property just about the time they were getting ready to start construction on, on the uh, pier. And, uh, uh, then there were some discussions uh, about uh, acquiring the property at that time, and uh, we were not able to get together, and the first phase of the North Shore was built, then the second phase, and uh, then an opportunity came uh, to buy the property, which I did, and even at that time, which was 12 years ago, I, uh, I negotiated in that uh, purchase contract that if the North Shore were ever to be sold, that I would have a right of first refusal to buy the property uh, because of my great love for this area and uh, an envision that I had as to uh, what I would like to see uh, uh, built uh, in this area. And lo and behold, some 12 years later, that uh, uh, dream uh, by our acquisition uh, uh, of the site uh, has come a step closer. Yes. Now, as you've indicated, your executive offices are already located there. When you uh, put this project into uh, work and you have several phases, I believe. Could you give our viewers th an idea of two points? First of all, during the construction over a, a period of time, approximately how many people will be employed in the construction? And secondly, when it is completed, how many additional full-time positions uh, will be available to uh, work at that uh, complex? Those are very good questions, Tony, and I think very important to the, uh, to the economy of all of North Idaho. Uh, taking strictly the North Shore site, not any retail development that uh, might occur up on Sherman Avenue, uh, we estimate that uh, we will have uh, 
uh, in excess of 400 employees at the North Shore. And uh, during construction, uh, uh, it would be our thinking at this time that we would have in excess of 200 uh, uh, construction people, and that would uh, have peaks of higher than that level and, uh, and lower, depending on, uh, on the phase of, of construction. But it would be a, a, a very significant uh, 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 construction project uh, in northern Idaho that, uh, of course, not only the employment but all of the materials that will be used and it certainly will be our goal uh, as it always has been to do everything that we can uh, to purchase uh, materials and hire as many local people as we can because it's very critical for me to see that these dollars are kept in Coeur d'Alene. Yes. Then following the completion of all the phases, approximately how many additional uh, positions will there be uh, for employment? Well our, uh, you know, we have, uh, we have generated some figures, Tony, uh, uh, taking the Idaho tourist uh, uh, industry's uh, uh, averages as to what a tourist spends in a 24-hour period when they rent a room in a community and the rollover effect of those dollars and uh, the taking those figures on a conservative basis would mean that when the project is completed in its first full year of operation and that's using 1983 dollars not 85 or 86 dollars that it will bring a hundred and twelve million dollars in new outside money into the Coeur d'Alene area, which is a, which is a dramatic infusion of, of clean new dollars to this community that, uh, that can go a long ways towards uh, improving uh, all of our lives in North Idaho. The same kind of principle applies to North Idaho College, where with students and faculty and so forth, that the dollar turns over many times. I've heard as many as seven times. Uh, because this program is short and we don't have lots of time and I wish we had more, I would uh, like for you to take this opportunity to go through the project with our viewers and take a look at the different uh, parts of the complex. And I, uh, before we start, maybe we should get one more point across. I have heard figures that this entire project for construction will be approximately $30 million. Is that approximately the, the sum? Tony, it's, uh, uh, it's a little early to tell exact figures. Uh, uh, the, uh, that number was arrived at in taking the, uh, the uh, commitment that the Hagedon Corporation has made to this project, which would include our investment uh, in the acquisition, uh, not of all of Western Frontiers, but an allocation of a share of the purchase price to the North Shore site. Uh, plus the additional acquisitions that we have uh, that we have made to date, along with the uh, with the construction figures, uh, uh, including the marina, and uh, if we were to include the penny block, uh, I would think that would be a very conservative figure, okay. Tony. Thank you. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start through the project with Mr. Hagedon, and I think maybe we'll start with the uh, clock tower. That's going to be, I believe, the focal point, and it's out near Sherman, um, where I'm seated on the left end of the project, and Dwayne, if you'll just go and take us through the entire project. Well, I uh, would love to do so, Tony. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, for the viewers, uh, the area here that uh, I hope that you can see uh, that's indented along is, uh, is Sherman Avenue, uh, and we're heading, uh, heading east on Sherman, coming down Northwest Boulevard. The first point that Tony alluded to was the clock tower, which we hope will become a very uh, a significant landmark in, commun in the community. It will be a three-sided uh, clock with a very large face. Uh, one of the uh, uh, faces will look uh, straight up Sherman Avenue. We think somewhere between 7th and 8th Street will the tower will become visible as you drive down Sherman Avenue. The second angle will be out Northwest Boulevard at least four or five blocks as you come down Northwest Boulevard you'll be able to see the, the second face. I wish I could get the camera to come in on a close-up, if they would, uh, zero in on that clock so the viewer can get a, even a closer idea. There we go, and, and see this is the focal point you're discussing. Yes, these are the two faces. And then the third face will be out in the middle of the lake, so when you're out boating, Tony, you can tell what time it is. Yeah. And then uh, we are searching already uh, for uh, uh, some really outstanding uh, chimes or uh, some type of, uh, of system that... Uh, that uh, we can use during the holiday season and during other appropriate times in the year that will, that will really add a, a real true theme to, to downtown Coeur d'Alene. So 
uh, we're very excited about uh, about the clock tower and uh, uh, it I should also point out will be located on what is now Templin's restaurant the Templin restaurant will be totally demolished yeah. in our plans and out on the the shoreline uh, we will have a very unique dining experience uh, we have not named the restaurants yet but it will be uh, a garden type restaurant that will be a very intimate uh, rather small facility with a lot of glass and uh, a lot of plants that will have an unobstructed view uh, totally south out in uh, to the lake and we're very excited about uh, uh, about this restaurant and that will be the only structure on the Templin site the balance will come down which will dramatically open the views and vistas which are important to the people of Coeur d'Alene and we're very proud of the fact that when not only this building comes down but we have also acquired the the uh, Chamber of Commerce building which is at 2nd and uh, Sherman and that will come out and all of that will go into landscaping. You're putting trees and shrubbery. Shrubbery, uh, more of, for my way of thinking, more of a low type uh, shrubbery even that is shown here, Tony. And uh, as the viewers uh, uh, travel Sherman Avenue, uh, even now it would be an interesting exercise for them to, as they're waiting at the light at 2nd and Sherman, to envision no chamber building and Templins being out of there, the dramatic view that will be improved uh, over the present site. So while we are going to be doing a lot of things on this site, uh, there will be much more access to the general public and much more view of our beautiful lake and mountains than there is today, which, was, uh, which we are very sensitive to and we spent a great deal of time and money and effort to see that that was accomplished. Okay, and now then there are several buildings here that are other complexes. Uh, and I believe while we're going up East Sherman that we will go into that area there. Yeah, right. I, I just I couldn't go by Tony without sure. saying here that, because another thing, we have no landscaping on the North Shore site right now. Yes. And we will have in this area over two and a half acres of green belt, of lawns and shrubbery and beautiful petunias and geraniums. Uh, and uh, those uh, that know me, uh, uh, I'm sure know my uh, appreciation for beautiful landscaping and I guarantee you this will be one of the most beautiful parks anywhere. And I notice even some uh, poles and uh, flags that will be flying. It's the different there. flags. We'll have a tourist information booth and we're going to have a large plaza that will be indented just a very small amount in this area, Tony, and we hope that this will become a area that the community will learn to really enjoy. We hope to see uh, band concerts and uh, arts and craft shows mm -hmm. and all types of community activities held on this site during the summer and we even feel that it will be designed not with refrigeration but we think over 60 days a year we'll be able to ice skate on that site. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be a very exciting area as we come along. Now next you'd like me to go up into the into yes, this block. Uh, this basically uh, uh, is the what we call the penny block which is between 2nd Street and 3rd Street from Sherman to Front Avenue. Uh, our organization owns the first two buildings uh, uh, in the block at this time and we have an option on all of the other property in that block and it is our goal to uh, reach an agreement to keep the Penny organization downtown which they are evaluating whether they want to stay in the downtown area or move to the uh, to the north side of the community and uh, we also are hoping on the back this now area that I am pointing to is presently the parking lot for Pennies, and we are hoping to bring a second major uh, department store into Coeur d'Alene. We've had some excellent uh, initial negotiations. Jerry Jager and I were in New York Monday of this week meeting with a very large uh, quality uh, uh, department store that is very interested and will be sending a research team into the area within the next couple of weeks. We have received permission from the city to vacate the alley and also to tie in Western Frontier, or the North Shore with the Penny Block by the uh, building of two skywalks, one coming from this end and then a circular pattern through the skywalk, or through the vacating of the alley, excuse me, and then back on the skywalk to our area, which is the parking garage. This will be a four-story parking garage, uh, which will uh, hold up to 640 automobiles, all but the top uh, area will be covered parking which we think will be very beneficial in the winter time. Mm -hmm. I also, Tony, and I know this is just take a second, but 
we're very excited uh, in that we've met with the downtown merchants and property owners and all of the property owners but two and we have not been able to contact them yet have agreed to spend uh, close to one million dollars in tying into the penny block in our parking garage by covering all of the sidewalks with a hopefully a glass covering in all of the intersections for a three block area building new sidewalks putting in benches and planters and uh, some lighting which will tie in almost like a shopping complex to our parking garage so that at any time you want to go shopping in downtown Coeur d'Alene in the winter time you can come in park undercover walk through our parking the skywalks and out into the downtown area and we, we're very excited about that. Even though you are uh, uh, taking very much consideration uh, of the problems we have of winter and uh, that's very, very good, but you're also, by using the glass and so forth, you're still keeping it open and people enjoying it and in the summertime they'll have that view and so forth. We so you're considering both the summer and the winter very carefully. The street will remain as is, Tony, and we are even looking at some of these glass panels to be opened in the summer mm -hmm. so that, uh, but the sides will, will definitely be open. So we think it's a good compromise over the the enclosed mall concept that yeah. was quite a controversy in the community for for some time and this has been basically approved and uh, we're very excited about that in tying in a very significant downtown retail area which frankly we feel is important to the hotel uh, and to North Idaho in attracting con really the top conventions uh, mm -hmm. when studies are showing uh, visitors like to have a nice shopping area. Yes, yes. very good. Okay, I'll let you proceed with the other uh, phases. The okay, Tony, I realize time is short. As you drive in through the entranceway now, you will come into the North Shore just as we have in the past. Uh, the present buildings will all remain, and they will, uh, the entrance door will be at the same area, only it will be all covered, and all the buildings will remain the same. At the North Shore. At the, the North Shore. This is the present North Shore Tower, and this is the present lower North Shore building. So uh, we will be rebuilding and remodeling all of those rooms. And then the major addition will be a 187-foot tower, which will have 150 new rooms, bringing a total of 187, uh, excuse me, 187 feet with 325 hotel rooms in the complex. And that's this area that you That is this of. total tower. Yeah. Cloud 9 will be extended out through to the waterfront and will be greatly expanded and improved. We'll have some meeting rooms and a board room in that area. Our rooms are going to be as luxurious as anywhere in the Northwest. Fireplaces, jacuzzis, wet bars. They're going to be beautiful rooms, well decorated and well built, uh, and, w and they will be right out over the water's edge. Coming on around, we're going to build a deck pool on the second level, uh, which will be great for sunning. We're going to expand the present lounge with the quiet lounge. We're going to expand TJ's restaurant, which is the 24-hour restaurant, and along the side here we're even going to have some terraced outside eating, and we're also going to have a decked uh, uh, area at the seawall where people uh, may sit, and we're going to have a floating stage, and hopefully we can have some small concerts and even some meetings held out in the sunshine right on the lake. Very fine. Uh, now with that part of the complex, I believe that if I'm uh, interpret this correctly, that those are actually steps that come right down, right down the to water. the water's edge. Right. As something similar to what they have in Spokane, I believe, at, at the uh, expo that they built. Right. Mm -hmm. So that gives someone some identification. I've also noticed on the complex all the way around that you have uh, planters uh, and a lot of flowers that will circle all the way around the waterfront. If you uh, observe the Hagedon building uh, presently and in front, we have uh, uh, planters, uh, Tony, and uh, we fill them with geraniums and petunias and give special pride to those in the summer. In fact, these out along the boardwalk are still in bloom today. And we will bring that concept totally around our, our project, clear around to the city park to the east. Then something else that's uh, received attention and excitement many people is that in addition to the expansion of the boating area that, that I believe we can see when we zero in the camera shear, uh, beyond that area, you're talking about a boardwalk that would uh, cover a lot of areas, and we have a very famous song about boardwalks, and somebody that's coming to Idaho. Would you take a little time to tell us about both the docking area and then the boardwalk and the bridge that will, our bridges that will be around this area? Right. We're very excited about our boardwalk, which will start at the uh, Garden Restaurant, and will come out into the lake for half a mile, uh, and then come back and connect into the park on the east side. 
We think we have an unusual situation in Coeur d'Alene where with this boardwalk, you will be able to start over on West Lakeshore, so even start at the college. You could even start over here and then come, and on come down to all the way down and around. We will have benches, we will have uh, flowers, we will even have a covered area out in the center where you may stroll a half a mile out into Lake Coeur d'Alene with a totally on it. There will be nothing out here but boats, unobstructed view. We'll have two bridges that will be built so the boats may cross under to come into the marina. Another bridge on this side, our, our gassing facility uh, it will be in this particular building. And then you come on around to the entrance of our, of our marina on, uh, on the east side, which will, uh, which will then tie back into our parking garage and also into the city parking area. And people will then be able to walk on around out to Tubbs Hill, totally around Tubbs Hill and out to uh, Sanders Beach, Tony. So the Tubbs Hill is over here in this area. Yes. And, uh, really will we'll blend in because Tubbs Hill is a very beautiful part of our city and it's enjoyed now sure. by many, many hikers. Uh, Dwayne, I th think that we still have uh, time to deal with several other things and I wish that you would move over to the boardwalk and you have brought a sample of what it would be like and explain to the viewers how that will be constructed. Well, this is a very uh, exciting and a unique project, uh, Tony. Uh, we think that it will become one of the outstanding uh, tourist attractions in the entire Pacific Northwest. This model was built by uh, Fred and Lauren and Skip Murphy, who are the experts on anything to do with Lake Coeur d'Alene. Uh, these are the logs that the flotation uh, uh, will uh, give us. Uh, the area below that I'm pointing to will be the stability and also act as the breakwater for the marina. And the area on top will be the decking, a 12-foot boardwalk with a railing. And we will have benches and lights. And we don't show the flowers, but it will be just a a gorgeous place to go for an afternoon or an evening stroll uh, right out in the middle of the lake because there are so many people and visitors that uh, have no access to our lake or do not own boats that really can, can, can enjoy the middle of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Dwayne, uh, inform our viewers about how wide the boardwalk is. I probably am correct to assume that they may not know that it's, it's, it's uh, 12 quite feet. wide. It's 12 feet. Oh, you bet. It's 12 feet in width and it will have great stability, Tony. It really will. And another important factor is that in the interior of this boardwalk, we will have uh, tie-downs so that upwards of 60 to 70 transient boats may park here. Well, I've always had concern, again looking at the retail area of downtown Coeur d'Alene, that with the literally thousands of summer homes that are on Lake Coeur d'Alene, there's really no way for those people to come in and shop. And they now, up to 70 of them at a time, will be able to park along here walk up and enjoy all of the facilities of downtown Coeur d'Alene and, and all of Coeur d'Alene as far as that's concerned. They will just park in here at the boardwalk. And on the, the inside. Mm -hmm. right. Very good. Uh, I think something else that we'd like to do uh, while we have a little time and, and uh, it's too far away for you to be over there, but we have a schematic, I believe, of the entire site and if the cameras could uh, zero in on that, at least we'll get an idea of what this entire uh, area looks like from uh, one view. and. Uh, while they're doing that, Dwayne, you might just explain again how much acreage we're talking about and uh, uh, that location. Right. Uh, we have uh, uh, an excess of seven and one-half acres, Tony, in the entire site. The areas that we haven't uh, touched base on yet will be our brand new convention center, which oh. will be the largest in the yeah. state of Idaho and the Inland Empire. We uh, plan to seat 1,500 people in our convention center, which will be located in this area. On the front side of this, uh, which our viewers cannot see, will be uh, probably one of the finest uh, indoor recreation areas. We'll have indoor swimming, jacuzzi, saunas, two racquetball courts, two uh, bowling lanes. Uh, uh, when we get through with this project, Tony, a guest will be able to do everything conceivable, all the water sports. We'll have uh, uh, the Mishinok available, other rental boats, uh, sailboats. They'll be able to do everything but play golf. And we haven't figured out how to get a golf course in here Do you yet, have a tennis so court in there? On top, excuse me, on top of the convention center, two tennis courts and a sport court. Well, I knew you just couldn't leave tennis out. Darn so right. We've got to have some We tennis. both have for tennis. Okay. And so 1,500 people could uh, be in the convention center for a given uh, program or You speech. bet. Yes. And uh, will there be eating facilities within the convention center or will they the, move over to the... The convention center, you bet, will have a full restaurant. And then in front of that will be on the second level will be a gourmet seafood restaurant that we'll view out over our marina as well. So we'll actually have four restaurants on the complex when completed. 
that is this most interesting. And one reason I'm so happy that you came to do the program, uh, other than uh, as my friend uh, taking the opportunity to be on our program, is that the viewers need to uh, get a chance to hear more details. Uh, everyone doesn't have the opportunity to be at a given meeting when this is presented. Uh, with the little time we have left, and we do have about four minutes left, Duane, uh, I would like for you to explain um, uh, for the viewers that uh, how many activities could be going on approximately at the same time in this complex. Uh, if there's a convention, for example, of 1,200 people, and what else could be going on at the same time that that's happening over there? I know you've mentioned that people will just have access to this area just from day to day as they want to come through, but how many things could you uh, carry on in uh, organized functions at once? Well, Tony, I think that's uh, one of the real pluses in our project. Uh, all of the citizens of Coeur d'Alene are very sensitive to their shoreline and our shoreline, and we are sensitive to that. And we feel that we will develop on our seven and a half acres uh, uh, great utilization. And a hotel, uh, I don't know of, an, of a of another usage that would be so open to the public. Uh, I would question whether the front door to our facility will ever be locked. And there is not uh, an area of this entire project. If you want to come in and rent a room for the night, you may do so. If you want to come in and just relax in the lobby, you may do so. If you want to have dinner or have a cocktail, uh, we in the four restaurants, uh, we'll be able to seat, uh, uh, I would guess, well over a thousand people. Uh, upwards of 300 people in our, uh, in our lounge area. Uh, we will have 325 rooms, which could house another 600 people. Our Mishanak, uh, which we hope to do some uh, major uh, expansion with, uh, uh, can uh, take up to 500 on a boating cruise. Uh, we will have 340 boat slips, uh, which again are rentable to the public, and anyone can rent a slip and uh, for their boating uh, enjoyment. Uh, plus getting back into all the retail area and uh, uh, arts and crafts in the, in the plaza. It can, uh, there are literally thousands of people that can use the facility. There's also a tie-in, isn't there, with the college here, and uh, we have lots of programs, speakers, concerts, and so forth, so there can be uh, some real back and forth uh, connections as far as people visiting and enjoying where they stay and other performances that they may have in the city. I wish we had more time, but the clock has won out again, and uh, we are out of time, but uh, I want to thank you very much for being here, and it's been very informative, and I know our viewers have learned so many things uh, about the complex that will be here in the near future. Thank you very much, Dwayne. Well, thank you, Tony. I've, uh, I'm a great fan of yours, enjoy watching your show, and it's very exciting and complimentary to me that you would uh, ask me to come down and talk about our latest project. Well, it's been special for me. Uh, I appreciate that very much, and thank you for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest has been uh, Mr. Dwayne Hagedon, who's been discussing this new complex that's going to be uh, redeveloping downtown and uh, will be available to the public uh, in a very short time. I hope you've enjoyed our program and that you'll be with us again next week at this very same time. Please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. The North Idaho College Public Forum can be seen at this same time each week over this station. This production was videotaped earlier by a North Idaho College student crew for viewing at this more appropriate time. <laughs>